Hey guys, what is cracking? We are back today with another episode of Team Building University. I, of course, am, of course, Kraken Nation, um, your guide on this team building adventure that has been going on for basically ever. So, today we are going to be looking at another team archetype. Today is going to be the team um, bulky balance archetype. So, we're going we're hopping right into it. We're going to talk about what really bulky balance is all about. So, first of all, I want to say that bulky balance resides towards the defensive end of the spectrum, but again, not quite as to at the end of the defensive spectrum as hard stall. Um, bulky balance teams are going to utilize defensive mods to prevent the opponents of offense from gaining traction for a majority of the game. What this means is that similar to a stall, this, this is a very stally defensive type of game, which means similar to stall teams, your goal is, one of your biggest goals is having a strong defensive core. These could be a fire, water, grass, a fairy steel, a strong defensive core that can halt uh, the opponent's onslaught of attacks, uh, put them in a situation to hopefully gain some unnecessary switches, which is the next point and something that offensive teams don't usually like, is that you're going to be able to force switches, which allows your team to gain chip damage for important KOs later on. By being halting their defensive momentum and gaining a little bit of chip damage here and there when you can, hopefully you'll be able to weaken their team, cripple them to the point where that later on in the game, you'll be able to come in with a clutch, like not necessarily a sweep, but some clutch attacks um, which is what makes bulky balance differentiated from stall because right now everything we talk about is the same as stall. But what differentiates it is that once opponent's threats have been effectively neutralized or whittled down, or whenever a safe moment in the game arises, they are able to utilize strong tanky attackers to punch holes. So essentially, what this means is a bulky balance team is a stall team with teeth. Um, it's the best way I can describe it. That how is how what you're how you're going to be playing is that you're going to be taking hits. You're going to be hopefully switching well through your defensive core. Hopefully it has good recovery, you're able to continuously switch between these um, defensive Pokemon, and every so often when you know there's a chance to launch an attack, um, you're going to be able to launch, you know, like some kind of attack, it's going to be able to hit a little harder than normal. Um, therefore, when you're looking at the Pokemon in a bulky balance type uh, of team, you're going to be looking at a lot of Pokemon that generally run stab attacks, um, and these are stab attacks that hopefully will be able to hit fairly hard, even your defensive Pokemon will generally run some kind of strong stab attack. Um, so, hopping right into the Pokemon that are in the team, um, you're going to notice right off the bat, I'm kind of going up towards from defense to offense, so you're going to notice right as we kind of go, which is what I'm hoping you'll be able to see, is that every team is kind of utilizing similar things from the team before it, and leaving behind some of the things from the teams, like two team before or something, or two team before. So it's kind of like you'll see slowly our transition from a defensive playstyle to an offensive playstyle by seeing the step-by-step -step progression. Um, so, first of all, any good defensive team, which is a, this is a largely defensive type of team, is going to need a physical wall. Um, I really didn't know how to get rid of these. These I don't know what these lines are, so these guys are going to ignore them. I'm sorry that they've been in the last two episodes of this, but there's really just no way to get rid of them. I've tried. Like, they're not there, and then they're here. Like, I don't know what it is. Anyways, so strong physical walls are going to be Pokemon that can take a physical attack, um, and then hopefully be able to recover off the damage in some way, and they're going to be an important part of any strong defensive backbone. We have, to the, to the counterpart of every physical wall, we're going to have special walls, which is again a strong special, especially to defend the Pokemon, capable of taking on special attackers that would otherwise threaten the team. Um, we have clerics, which clerics oftentimes double with a special wall, but it's a Pokemon that is able to support team by offering important roles such as wish passing or status healing move. Um, again, these are going to be Pokemon that very often double with the special wall category, as you can see, Clefable, sorry, Clefable, wall Clefable only a cleric, Sylveon and Chansey are both special and special walls and clerics. Um, something I do want to stress is that I'm giving you like 10, 10 or 15 or something roles, I don't know, roles that a good bulk balance team should have, but a lot of these roles are going to compound to one, which is like a special wall and a cleric will generally be the exact same Pokemon on your team. Um, so moving on, we have Hazard Setter. Again, Hazard Setters are oftentimes physical walls, um, but ha these, um, because Hazard passive forms of, uh, Passive forms of damage like hazards can be so beneficial. A Pokemon with access to hazard is mandatory. Um, what this means is that, as we said earlier, you're, what you're going to be really important is like forcing switches and gaining that chip damage, and then utilizing that little bit of some damage to score important KOs and hits on things when the match is you're in a situation where you can. Which is again what differentiates this type of team from a stall team, being able to attack when the moment is right. Um, and again, as we move towards true balance in the next episode, you'll be able to see that that's more offensive, and like, and we'll keep going down that road. Um, so, 
Finally, again, or not finally, what am I saying? But a hazard for every hazard setter, you're gonna need a hazard clear. This play style is, focuses most heavily on defense. Actually, this the, again, like stall, this play style focuses a lot on um, very defensive switching. So keeping hazards off the field is gonna be very important for any good team. Um, again, so one Pokemon that you might have seen has popped up three times already is Skarmory. Skarmory is a great Pokemon on a lot of bulky balance teams and a great Pokemon in general on a lot of teams in OU. Um, but Skarmory fits well because it has access to an attack move such as Iron Head or Brave Bird, both of which hit things very well. Iron Head hitting things like Mega Dancy, Gengar, Alakazam, uh, Clefable. Pokemon, although it doesn't hit Clefable super hard, but there are Pokemon that get hit by Iron Head. And again, Brave Bird also can hit things like Mega Venusaur, like Keldeo, a lot of these more offensive Pokemon. But Skarmory also has access to Defog, has access to Hazard Setting, has access to Roost. It's a great physical wall. Um, so yeah, it's a great Pokemon on a lot of these types of teams. But um, so, yeah, as you're going to be needing to switch a lot, you're going to really want to be able to keep your hazards off your side of the field, and Starmie, Tentacruel um, are great Pokemon that fit into the bulky balance archetype that will be able to do this. Um, one thing that, this is the first type of concept that the um, stall team did not use, but the, uh, the bulky balance team does use, because a defensive pivot is going to be helpful for um, scouting for switches, gaining chip damage, and spreading status. So... What's really good about a defensive pivot is going to be that they can come in, dish maybe a little bit of damage or cripple an opponent, come back out to hopefully gain favorable type and matchup when you feel like it's the right time to launch an attack on your opponent. Um, that's what's really great about pivots in general is that they can gar garner some offensive momentum um, and defensive piv pivots fit better on a defensive side of that momentum grabbing type move. Um, I think it's called like initiative recently. Um, and that they'll be able to switch gain you some, uh, some momentum, shift it into your favor when the time to attack is right. Um, so yeah, Slowbro, again, doubling du Slowbro and Ferrothorn double both as physical walls and as great um, defensive pivots. Rotom Wash can utilize Volt Switch initiative to grab offensive momentum quite easily. Um, so finally get into some offense. So as I said earlier, you're going to need some teeth. You're now getting moving away from stall. So a special tank is a special... A special thing that Pokemon are able to absorb hits and retaliate with hard special attacks. So, so these three are all great examples. Um, Heatran has great defensive stats, but also a really stellar 130 special attack stat that can be garnished by a strong special move pool. You could run an air balloon offensive tram. You could run a life, uh, sorry, a leftover offensive tram. You could even go as far as to run choice specs and launch some crazy strong attacks such as Magma Storm, Flash Cannon, Stone Edge, Ancient Power, uh, Earth Power. I don't know if I already said Flash Cannon, but yeah, it's, he turns a great Pokemon. Hoopon Bound, while it is very weak on the physical side, so that's something you need to be wary of, it is very tanky on the special side, so you could run a great Assault Vest Hoopa set and really dish some damage for further information. Check out my video on Hoopa Unbound. Um, Clefable, also a great special tank, as it's able to use Calm Mind once. Um, a physically defensive Clefable can use Calm Mind once, take special attacks, and hit very hard. Generally, you're going to really want to run unaware, although Calm Mind is... Uh, sorry, in this role, you're going to run a one want to run unaware, although Magic Art is always a very viable option as well. Um, now you're going to want, want to run a physical tank as well, sometimes. A physical tank is able to absorb hits and retaliate with strong physical attacks. So physical tanks are going to be vital in any type of um, team, because phys uh, bulky balance team, because physical offense is so prominent in the meta right now. Examples of this are going to be things like Assault Vest Azumarill, who can definitely sponge a special attack. Assault Vest Conkler doing the same thing. Both of these Pokemon can hit very hard. I would say that Azumarill has an advantage as far as offensive typing goes, um, along with just pure, like, just having a lot more hitting power, while Gar what Congolair's advantage is, is um, having access to some form of recovery in Drain Punch, as long as well as hitting almost everything in the switch-in, whereas Azumarill does have good counters, Congolairs are fewer, um, because it does have such great options for coverage. That said, they are both countered by similar things such as Mega Venusaur, and if Gengar switches in, you might be in a tough spot or something like that, or Latios or Latias. Um, finally, Tank Chomp is a great option as long as doubling is a physical wall and more offensive team. Probably not going to be your offensive wall of choice, but in this one, a nice Tank Chomp role could be useful as a hazard setter and offensive Pokemon. Um, finally, you're really going to want to stick with the concept of a defensive Mega. Because your defensive Megas um, can be a uh, defensive part of any defensive install core, a defensive mega is going to be really vital in this playstyle more than any um, type of, uh, <coughs> like, hyper... There's, like, hyper-offensive, defensive, balance, and almost anything can be fit on a balanced team. But in this case, with bulky balance, 
because defensive megas are going to be so really reliable. I would say Mega Venusaur is a great defensive mega to utilize. Um, so this is an example of a team. Um, well, I did say you're going to want to use a defensive mega. What's great about a Pokemon like Mega Venusaur is that it can run both defensive and offensive roles very effectively while also maintaining some semblance of the other. So what I mean by that is that Mega Venusaur can have a great amount of bulk while also maintaining a great special attack stat if you invest into it. With, so with Giga Drain, Sludge Bomb, Hidden Power, Fire, Synthesis, this is a great tanky Mega Venusaur set. It operates as this team's special tank. Along with um, special, like, uh, there's a lot of, like, great synergy here with the Heatran um, Venusaur core, um, so that Heatran can uh, offer some attacks, cons and, I like, the Psychic-type attacks that Venusaur fears, Heatran can switch into the Fighting-type attacks, but he transfers Venus or can switch into stuff like that. So this is a great another example of a Venus train core, slightly more offensively oriented. Um, you're gonna have, another option is a physical, physically offensive, obviously. Conkler, uh, Conkler is a great Pokemon. You know, as I said earlier, with reliable recovery and some or like semi-reliable recovery and great move pool to utilize it along with Assault Vest being a great way to tank special hits. Um, we've got Slowbro as a defensive pivot to allow you to switch in and out. Um, also, what's great about Slowbro is that it's going to be able to. Uh, spread some status such as Thunder Wave or Toxic or even get Scald Burns. That's great, honestly, offensive synergy with its two attacks. And Regenerate allows it to keep utilizing switches, which is what this, again, this playstyle is going to be all about. But, so, like, Slowbro is a great example of a Pokemon that can l launch some kind of offensive pressure on your opponent if it just wants to keep clicking Scald. Nothing really wants to switch into that because if, if everything, like, ev nothing really wants to be burned except, like, Conkledur. Um, or, like, Water types don't really care as much. But, and then it also has that defensive presence with through status, through slack off, through regenerator. Um, we have a tank fable, which is going to be like similar to like a calm mind, either magic guard or unaware set. I would recommend calm mind, uh, soft boiled, or I don't know if soft you can actually run soft boiled. It might have to be like moonlight, but calm mind, moonlight, um, flamethrower, and moonblast, which is going to achieve great coverage on the entire tier. Things that resist moonblast being the biggest thing, things scissor and. Um, Ferrothorn cannot take a flamethrower, and I think actually a fully, fully physically defensive nested, good, like healthy Clefable can take a bullet punch from banded Mega Scissor. Oh, sorry, from banded Scissor. So you will be able to flamethrower it back very hard. Finally, we have Skarmory as both a um, hazard clear and another great, the great, a great physical wall for this team. Um, synergizes well with Heatran just because of its fire type weakness. Heatran can switch in. He trains ground and fine type weaknesses. Skarmory can switch in very well. Uh, it also forms a great part of a defensive backbone for this team. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. I'm excited to start going to more offensive teams because I feel like a lot of times players find them more enjoyable to play. Um, we're, next episode is going to be balanced. Probably come out in a week or so. Um, yeah, so as always, like, rate, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Always very appreciated. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. Um, I think that's all I had to say for now. See you guys later. Kraken Nation out.